God bless you. All right, I think we've got the idea. We have a wonderful Savior, amen? amen. Somebody say amen. amen. We got a wonderful Bible, the King James Bible, amen. amen. We've got a wonderful Heavenly Father we can pray to that will do exceeding abundant above all that we could ask or think, amen? Turn your mic on one time. All right, turn the mic on. Okay, let's see. Ain't got no power here. Got power up there, brother? All right. There we go. Is it on? Okay. Amen. Let me repeat all that. We got a wonderful Savior. Amen. <laughs> all right. <laughs> do that one again. We'll do it a few more times. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor Paulie. It's a joy to be here. And I trust that uh, tonight Jesus will be lifted up. And uh, we'll give him the honor and glory and praise for encouraging our hearts, maybe even convicting our hearts. Amen. And uh, thank God for Wednesday night prayer meeting. Faith Baptist Church is still having Wednesday night prayer meeting. Amen. And uh, Wednesday night prayer meeting is wonderful too. Amen. When the Holy Spirit shows up, we pray to Jesus. And our Heavenly Father answers and hears our prayers. Thank you, Pastor Paulie. Thank you, Faith Baptist Church, for your prayers. I really mean that. Uh, God answered those prayers. You asked my wife about it after the service uh, tonight. She can testify to uh, a miracle in my life, literally. And uh, we give him the praise and glory for it. And I could spend the whole service talking about that, but I'd rather talk about Jesus and uh, give him the glory and praise for it all. How many have your King James Bibles tonight? Lift them up all over the building. Amen. Turn in Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. I want you to hold your place right there for just a moment. I'm going to get you to help me uh, with a, uh, a Bible verse that we're going to kind of use as a springboard introduction to the message uh, this evening. And uh, it's found in uh, Matthew 6, 33, but you don't have to turn there. Uh, we're going to memorize this verse tonight, okay? Matthew 6, 33, but you hold your finger at Colossians chapter 1, and we'll be right back there in just a few minutes. But Scripture says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Now, I want you to help me with that, okay? So repeat after me, first of all, this phrase, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. Say that with me. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. Then this phrase, and His righteousness. All together. And His righteousness. And all these things, and all these things shall be added unto you, shall be added unto you. Now God tonight, he may stick his oar in the water of your life. He says, but seek ye first. He wants our attention. And he's called our attention to a main objective and purpose in our lives. To seek first the kingdom of God, and His righteousness. Now, let me say this. If you start with the last part of that verse, you're no better than the unsaved Gentile, the lost individual, because they're seeking after the things of this world, the things of this life. I was just talking to a, a dear brother, and I, I believe he's saved. Him and his family have... Uh, some beautiful children that are serving God, but he's approaching those retirement years. Anybody there? Amen. All right. Uh, I, I don't think there's any retirement in view for me because I think it takes money to retire. <laughs> and I ain't got any of that, so I guess you have to keep on going. Amen. But uh, uh, he shared with me with some enthusiasm uh, their goal to pretty much get them uh, an RV of some sorts and go traveling and doing a lot of things that 
they have not had opportunity to do because of work and commitments and so forth. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, I have been privileged to travel literally around the world, and it's been a blessing, and, and God has paid for it. You can ask my wife about that after church. Some amazing places we've been. Things we've done as a result of God blessing us in some unique ways. But I thought about it while he was sharing this, this dream of retirement. Why not spend those years serving Jesus instead of just getting in an RV and traveling somewhere, sightseeing, national parks, fishing, hiking, or whatever? Why not use those remaining years, that retirement money, to do something for Jesus Christ that you were not able to do because of commitments, job, finances, Family, children, why not? But is God interjecting Himself tonight, our wonderful Lord and Savior, and saying to us, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. The theme for our ministry this year has been first in flight. Now, I took this plate off of Pastor Polly's car. Don't let me forget to, <laughs> to, to give you back this plate. I, all, on the North Carolina plates, you'll see first in flight. you also see first in freedom. And I'm thankful you see in God we trust. The motto in this state is Esiquam Videri, to be rather than to seem. I want to be what God wants me to be. I, I want to be right with Him. I, I want to be the kind of person that gives Him the glory. Not, not just to seem like that person, but to be genuine. To be that person. Esiquam Vadiri. Our theme this year has been a challenge. And you know why. Uh, a lot of this COVID stuff has been very political. And um, I do believe a, an attack on God's work, on getting the gospel out, on God's people assembling together and worshiping Him and singing about our wonderful Jesus and fellowshipping and encouraging one another. It's been a challenge this year. It's been a challenge to, to put Him first in everything because at times life has become overwhelming. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness is still in the book. First in flight. Orville and Wilbur Wright, we were down on the coast uh, a little over a year ago of North Carolina. And there were uh, those monuments, that monument to two men who had a dream. Orville and Wilbur Wright, a dream to fly. I am sure there were some people that said, now Orville... You ain't going to be able to fly. Wilbur, talk some sense into that brother of yours. You can't fly. They had a dream that they would fly. 66 years. That's not a lot of time, brother. Have you seen 66 years pass? I've seen 66 years pass. In my lifetime, that's not a lot of time. Yeah, man. But from the time of their first flight, 66 years after that first flight, man landed on the moon. From Kitty Hawk to Tranquility Base, the eagle has landed. 
For ye shall mount up with wings as eagles. Tonight, would you take the challenge to be first in flight, to mount up with wings as eagles and soar above the wood, hay, and stubble and feast on the wonderful things of Jesus. Seek ye first. When I got saved, there were some first, some foundational things that thrilled my soul as a 17-year-old teenager. That brings us to our passage in Colossians chapter 1. I want you to give attention to verse 12 where the Bible says, giving thanks unto the Father. Let me stop right there just a moment. Are we living in an unthankful generation? You watch that in the book of Romans. Uh, we just sent um, uh, probably 4,000 John and Romans to Brother Eliezer Hartalisa and Brother June Hartalisa in a box with some uh, rice and some coffee and some sugar and some chick tracks. And uh, those boxes weighed over 120 pounds each. They're going there so they can use those resources to tell people about Jesus. Amen. And I'm thankful tonight. I want you to know that God has brought some people our way to supply those tools and resources that we can give them to missionaries on the field to tell lost souls about our wonderful Jesus. Amen. And I'm thankful for that. In that John and Romans, and it's a, a very similar publication to this one, just John and Romans inside, in English. That Romans chapter 1 talks about a generation unthankful. That's a, that's a start down a slippery slope when you're not thankful. And not thankful to the Heavenly Father. I just interject that tonight. By the way, I keep a stack, preacher, of thank you cards. Greeting cards to send people. And I may miss somebody every now and then, but I do my best to say thank you to those that spend time giving of their life, time. That's their life giving of themselves to me, to my dear wife, to our ministry. I'm thankful. Above all, thankful to my Father. It says giving thanks unto the Father. If you do not send out thank you cards, let that be a first for you tonight to determine that when somebody comes alongside and is a current encouragement to you to let them know that you appreciate what they've done. Giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Hey, Amen. I like that. Saints in light. Hey, that's a lot of darkness out there. A lot of confusion out there. We are saints in light. We're not in the dark. We're not worried and confused and, and, and overwhelmed by this world system. We're the saints of light. Amen. And I'm thankful for it. Not darkness. And watch this. Our Heavenly Father hath delivered us from the power of darkness. Amen. Now that's the kingdom of the devil. But our verse says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. I'm not looking for life in the grave. You remember that resurrection day? Why seek ye the living among the dead? Amen. Woo! I'm a saint in the light. Amen. And I've been delivered from the devil and his darkness and his deception. Right. And have translated us into, here it is, the kingdom of his dear son. Amen. That's the seeking first. The seeking of the kingdom of God. 
in whom, verse 14, we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. I'm so thankful that when I lay my head down at night, my sins are gone. My sins are forgiven. And let me add this. When those times of trials and difficulties come, And it seems that the darkness is trying to overwhelm and cloud out, shroud out the light. Plead the blood of Jesus. Amen. That's what it says right here. In whom we have redemption through his blood. Even the forgiveness of sin. Hallelujah. For the blood of Jesus, the power of Jesus, the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. It sheds light upon our path that we need not stumble in darkness and confusion in this world. Verse 15, who is the image of the invisible God? The first, hey, there's that word, the first, watch it, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. Now hang on to that thought. And it carries over into verse 17 and 18. And he is before all things. Jesus was not created. He is the eternal one. And the same yesterday, today, and forever. By him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the first. There it is again the firstborn from the dead, uh, that in all things he might have the preeminence. In this passage, we see the first law of thermodynamics. There's a sermon right here. Because nothing is created and nothing is annihilated. Because Jesus created all things... And all things by him consist. Do some study on that. Dr. Henry Morris has some good information on the first law of thermodynamics. And then secondly, the firstborn from the dead. I mentioned just a moment ago, those that seek the living among the dead... This world, the things of this world are passing. It is darkness. It is death. It's fleeting. You're not going to take it anywhere beyond this life. Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life. And it is Him and in Him and through Him and by Him as we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, that these things shall be added unto us. I want you to know, you can have a piece of the pie. I don't know how big your piece will be, and I don't know whether you'll have peach pie, apple pie. My wife prefers chocolate pie. But I'm telling you, whatever pie you need, Jesus is able. Amen? Amen. And if we will seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, all these things shall be added unto you. I'm persuaded that God's people have access to whatever resources the church needs to whatever resources your family needs. It is all in Jesus. Someone has said, Jesus is not all you need until Jesus 
is all you have. And I want you to know, if we will give ourselves wholly, unreservedly to him, seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then all these things shall be added unto you. Food, raiment, housing, automobiles, money, whatever the need is. Jesus is able, people. Somebody say amen right there. He is able. The problem is that we are seeking after those things and not seeking after him. If our heart is hungry and craving Jesus and we're thirsting after Jesus and nothing will satisfy our soul but Jesus, all these things, amen, all these things shall be added unto you if you're seeking him first. Seek ye first the kingdom of of God. And then the first in all things. That's preeminence. That's not just words. These words are Jesus. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. As we read God's Word and those pages flutter across our face. It is very thuant theanustos, the breath of God. God's word, God's promises to God's children as they seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. That righteousness is right doing. We came across this today. I, I won't even go use this tonight, but I, I told the preacher I bring so much stuff up here that uh, uh, people get, get afraid and leave. They say all he's going to do is go up and read a bunch of stuff. Well, let me read this to you. Have you ever heard of L-A-T? And this is an illustration. It's true, though. It's called living apart together. L-A-T, living apart together. Together. Now, I, I've seen this firsthand. There are those in this walk of life who are in their senior years, and, and I, look, I'm not talking about lost people, brother. I'm, not talk, I'm talking about people in Bible preaching churches, brother Tommy. They are cohabiting, they are shacking up together. If they get married, they lose their benefits. So they cohabit. They shack up. They're living apart together. L-A-T. When in their senior years, they should have the wisdom and maturity to be an example in the church of God's righteousness. Righteousness is right doing. God can never do anything wrong. He's holy, people. And He has called upon us to be a peculiar holy people, a righteous people, doing what is right. I'm telling you, L-A-T ain't right. And it's going on in the church. And we wonder what was happening when the ABC store was essential and the church was non-essential. Where is the power of God upon the church in our righteousness to rebuke this darkness? In order to seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, there's some things we must confront. Now, when I was in school, I look, I, oh, thank you. Hmm. Hey, man, I'm back. <laughs> Woo, 
glory. Look, I got saved when I was 17. Junior in high school, had a teacher told our class that God is nothing but a crutch for weak men to lean upon. My wife and I have been married 48 years, preacher. Amen. It's been a journey for her. <laughs> been a walk in the park for me. <laughs> Look, the public school was denying God. It was full of a bunch of God haters. Don't, don't, I, I make more folks mad when I get on this. And uh, you liked me up until I mentioned that, didn't you? Look, they were teaching this book, The Origin of Species. Now, that's evil. It's evolution. It's denying God, the creator. By him all things consist. He created all things. Darwin and the core of what public schools were teaching was driven by this God-denying, God-hating lie right out of the pit of hell. Now, They've taken this out. I went and bought one of them. This right here, this is the title page. Always look at title pages. Title pages will tell you a lot. The Origin of Species. The subtitle. Everybody listening? I want to help you. I'm going to help you tonight. We need to get out of the government-run indoctrination centers. The Republicans cannot even think right because their minds have been monkeyed with by the devil. They're having a problem standing against that Jezebel, Nancy Pelosi, and the whole crowd there. They cannot. They cannot let the light shine because they don't have the light in them. The subtitle. I'm going to help you with this now. I'm being kind. I'm, I'm being kind. Brethren and sistren, I'm going to share a truth tonight and it will be up to you to decide what God would have you do with it. The subtitle of the origin of species is by means of natural selection. I will proceed to expound upon this topic for the next hour or so while the watermelon is chilling. <laughs> or, now it says this, and it, it, it's, not, it's not in the present origin of species that are being printed. Or, subtitle, the preservation, watch this, I'm not trying to hurt anybody. I'm telling you the truth. It says it right here. This is what Darwin said. This is what the government-run indoctrination centers have been teaching for decades. The preservation of favored races in the struggle for life. That is a racist book. That racism has been taught for decades in our government-run schools. This book is a book that brings the light and truth and freedom from the bondage and slavery of sin to any who will believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It's not a racist book. It's a book that reaches out to every tongue, tribe, and nation that sets our soul free. Amen? And that's the message we preach. But this is the message at the core and heart of what has been taught in public schools for decades. 
There's no struggle for pre, uh, preferred races. That's right. Jesus loves the little children. Amen. Red and yellow, black and white, they are all precious in Jesus' sight. Amen. And thank God that no matter the color or melanin of my skin, if I seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, all these things shall be added Amen. unto me. Amen. Now, confront this, will you? If you're going to seek first, regardless of how much money you have, regardless of the house you live in, regardless of the vehicle you drive, the clothes you wear, the education you have, if you're going to seek first the kingdom of God, then please ask these questions. Number one, and I'm talking to church people. Amen. That's where we are tonight, amen? amen. We're in God's house, amen. and we're here to learn what God says. Where did that come from? If we're going to seek first the kingdom of God, as a 17-year-old teenager, long hair, bell bottoms, surf shirt, surfboard, beach bum, that was me. I found out that I had to ask, where did Three Dog Night, Blood, Sweat, and Tears, Cream, Chicago, where did that come from? Because my daddy's pick em up truck was filled with that stuff. I listened to it, preacher. Where did it come from? Where does my entertainment come from? Where does my music come from? Where does my dress come from? Where do those piercings and those tattoos, where does cremation come from? Where does it come from? There's a list. We could go on and on as a sermon right there in that one question. Where does it come from? What I am infatuated with, what I crave, what I enjoy, what I am addicted to, where does it come from? Is it seeking first the kingdom of God and His righteousness? Or is it seeking first what I want? What appeals to my flesh? Where does it come from? Number two, where does that lead me? My wife and I, we were living in Montana. And right close to where we lived in western part of the state, a hunter with his high-powered rifle and scope in the crosshairs of that weapon pulled the trigger, releasing that projectile that he had targeted an elk for on a mountain. And yet on the next ridge was a young girl riding her horse. And that bullet killed that young girl on that horse. In our life, in our doings, in our entertainment, our hobbies, our passions and appetites, ask the question, where did that come from and where does that lead Shoot beyond the target. You may say, but preacher, I can do that. It's not hurting me. Where does it lead? What will that do to influence someone else? Talk about first. You never take the first drink of alcohol... You never shoot up the first time, do those drugs that come out of your parents' medicine cabinet the first time. There's a whole lot of things if we don't do the first time, they will never have power over us. 
They will never lead us down a road to ruin. Take us farther than we want to go. Keep us longer than we want to stay. And cost us more than we can afford to pay. Where did that come from? Where does that lead me? And then thirdly and final, where is God in this? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Is that what I want? Is that what I desire? Is that what I will have or die? Whatever you do, ask the question, where is God? Is God in that? The first time my wife went to India, the ladies, Indian ladies, they asked her why she had no piercings. There's a whole sermon there I can preach on that, and it's in the book. But they noticed she had no piercings in her ears, and a lot of the ladies in India do. Piercings in her, in her nose, her ears, her lip. It's a custom. They do it. And that's in India. But where is God in that? What does God say about that? Why do we do this, that, or the other? Where is God? And what does God's word say? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. I'm finished. And I want you to think about this before I pray. Is Jesus first... Preeminent as the scripture says, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Is Jesus first in your life? Have you ever, listen, think about this, a first. Have you ever led a soul to Jesus Christ? Maybe that will be a first for you. I've never tithed or given to missions. Let's make that a first. It's in the Bible. Study it. And let's make that a first. To do what God has commanded and then see God add all these things. I've never read the Bible through or memorized any scripture. Make that a first. Say to God, being my helper, I will read your book and I'm going to memorize some scripture passages to help me seek first. I'm not involved in the local church ministry of Faith Baptist Church. And I will come to Pastor Pauly And I'm going to say, Pastor Polly, I want to make it a first. I'm going to get involved in Faith Baptist Church. It might be cleaning the bathrooms. It might be helping in the yard work. It might be working in an outreach ministry. Are you soul winning, bus ministry, whatever's available. Pastor, I want to make it a first in my life to serve God. In the local church. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all. Did you get that? And all these things. I do believe with all my heart as a testimony to God's faithfulness. That what you need, God will supply. He's promised to supply. God cannot lie. It's a wonderful Jesus we serve. Amen. God help us to be first in flight. Our Father, in Jesus' name we pray. 
And thank you for your love, grace, and mercy. And tonight, may we be first to step up and say, Lord, help me. Help me to seek first the kingdom of God and your righteousness. And in so doing, as I travel along in life, see the blessings that you pour out upon me, my family, my service to you. God help us tonight to do it for your honor and glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Every head bowed and eye closed. Pastor, would you come? You dismiss us as...